Once they're safely secured, you will need to properly place their feet on the markers on the floor of the system. The CDP will display instructions for you on how to do this each time. The first thing that I always do is I determine which of the three vertical lines on the force plate to use based on my patient's height. The system will tell you which block vertical line to use and will, will be displayed on the screen stating either the small, medium, or large line based on their height. So here's what I would do. I'm going to ask Jackie to hold on to the bars, okay, just to keep your balance. Now Jackie's tall, so she's going to be, her foot is going to be aligned to what, what would be the large vertical line. So I'm going to just bend down and ask Jackie to lift her right foot up and I actually pick the foot up and I place it exactly where I want it to go. And I'm aligning her lateral calcaneus, which is the outer part of her heel, along this black vertical line, the large one, and then her medial malleolus, which is this inner ankle bone, along the black horizontal line. So at that point, I have her right foot exactly where I want it to be, and I use my fingers to make sure I have her foot aligned exactly where I want it. And then I do the same thing with the left foot. So Jackie, lift your left foot up for me, and I'm gonna place her foot just like this, make sure her calcaneus is on the large line, vertical line, Medial malleolus is on the black horizontal line. And she looks good right there. And now, what I would like to talk to you about is the placement of the feet and the importance of that. So it's very important to make sure you obtain an accurate measurement of the center of gravity of alignment when performing your assessments. So accurate scoring of these assessments requires that the feet are centered appropriately on each of the left and right sides of the force plate. The amount of distance between the feet is calculated depending on both the patient's height and the predictions of our limits of stability, as we discussed in the Foundations 101 course. The results of your assessments can be negatively affected if you do not place the feet appropriately prior to testing. It's important to note that not all assessments require this strict foot placement, and we'll go over this as we review each one in detail. However, in my opinion, it is always good to be in the habit of correct foot placement at all times to maintain consistency between assessments and reassessments. So once you have their feet aligned appropriately, you can now allow your patient to stand in a more relaxed fashion based on their normal stance position. And we call this allowing your patient to splay their feet. So in doing this, I'm gonna show you what I would do. I will go down and I'll hold on to Jackie's heel or her calcaneus and I'm going to do this first on her left foot and I'll just say okay Jackie if you're more comfortable with your feet being rotated out a little bit go ahead and move your toes out somewhat there you go yeah and then we'll do the same thing with the right to where you feel like you're standing in a more normal stance is that more comfortable for you great okay so Jackie likes to stand with her her feet out a little bit, it's a more comfortable position. You may find that some of your patients are more comfortable with their toes going in a little bit. You can have them move their toes in slightly and get in a comfortable position and that is the position that you can do all of the testing for the splay. However, most of the assessments allow for your patients to splay their feet to stand more comfortably, but there are a few that do not allow for this. The weight-bearing squat is one assessment that asks you to have your patient keeping their toes pointed forward and not to splay their feet. This is also the case for the single leg stance assessment, where the foot remains in a straight or a neutral position when testing. We will go into further detail on stance positions when we review each assessment.